This is an issue that has been brought up by President Obama with uh, President Xi in their meetings as recently as in March as a general problem uh, that we have seen uh, and uh, reflects the President's overall uh, concern about cybersecurity. It, it will be hard for the Chinese to get this under control because it's central to their economic planning, central to their military modernization, and it does link into the corruption problem. So we don't want to underestimate that it's a tough problem. What we want to see is some willingness on their part to move against it. So far, the cost, the loss from cyber espionage has been outweighed by the benefits of access to the China market. And I think we're reaching the point where that isn't true anymore. Oh boy, just what you needed. Another reason to worry about your security right here at home. Every day bombarded with cyber hackers and dweebs who delight in making certain your online life is less than safe and more of their own plaything. Now prepare yourself to perhaps wake up one day and have no power in your home or office. None. Zero. Thanks to cyber hackers who are set on disrupting the North American power grid. Scared yet? Joining us to unravel how dangerous this threat really is, the Vice President of Foreign and Defense Policy Studies at the Heritage Foundation, James Carafano, joins us. James, thanks so much for being with us today. Hey, it's good to be with you. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's get the fear out of the way. Right here, right up front. How scared should the normal public be? Joe Beercan sitting at home right now wondering that his power is going to disappear for a month. Um, that's a great question. So, uh, you know, on the one hand, we have power outages all the time, relatively periodic. And it's not the power outage per se, which is the problem, it's the context. So for example, in New York City, we had two major power outages about a decade apart. One produced a, a musical comedy and, and jokes about how many people got pregnant that day. And the other produced mass rioting that almost took the city down. So uh, there's a lot of factors that go into an outage other than just an outage. We have outages, it's actually US Canadian grid. So those, those outages can cascade. But in general, if, if we just have an outage and there's no other, you know, other consequences with it, um, even if it's a, you know, a terrible time of year like the middle of the winter, the, the United States can, can get through that. So that's, that's one set of problems. The problem is, is well, how often are we going to have these things? And you know, can, can you know, malicious actors be turning them on and off every day? And that's, that's a question that's more difficult to answer. All right, uh, here comes the science fiction side of this thing because I can think all of there's movies that I can remember. I'm, the titles, of course, escape me, but power goes out all over the place. Uh, the entire United States is wiped out. Uh, we cannot regenerate any power for days or weeks or months or years to come. Seriously now, how honest is that? If there was to be a cyber attack that would hit the North American power grid, what's the worst case scenario for getting it all back online? Yeah, I don't think anybody's written um, uh, a cyber scenario where through cyber you shut the entire network down forever. So for example, there's a video and you can watch them on YouTube of a DHS experiment where they actually sent a command to a generator and told the generator, burn yourself out. Uh, so I mean, even if somebody tried to do that and told all the transformers all over the country to burn yourself out, the, the, the notion that you could do a cyber t attack and take down the entire network, that's... Uh, that, that seems pretty problematic. There are, the, if you worry about taking the entire network down forever, then the threats you worry about are electromagnetic pulse, which is a, a, a flush of energy, which basically overloads the entire system. That is a feasible threat. It could be produced either through a nuclear weapon or even more scarily through a very, very major solar storm, which do happen periodically on, on the cycle of every couple of hundred years and we're kind of overdue for one of those. When we get to the hackers themselves, is there any doubt in some people's minds that the majority of what we're facing is coming from China? Um, on, on the, the, the majority of cyber uh, uh, malicious activity is from China, Russia, and then there's a lot of domestic and other people. So the point is, that, you know, does it really matter somebody kind of messing around in there? The question is, is what's their purpose and what are they planning on doing that? Of course, if you had an, an incredibly massive power outage that took the United States offline forever, you know, that would be kind of tough on the Chinese because they would lose access and they would take the largest economy in the world off market. Probably wouldn't be, uh, you know, very good for them. But the point is, is it, does it really matter who does it? What, because that's, if, if the consequences are, are huge, it doesn't matter if it's done by one little tiny person or if it's done by a, a, a giant government. Would the end result here be more economic or military? if you're shutting down that power grid? 
Well, I think that's a that's a good question. I have to I have to deal with you have to, I think you have to deal with consequences. So you know, can a cyber attack be an act of war? I think the answer is yes. So for example, if you if a government, if a state maliciously shut down your system uh, and then intentionally caused the death of people, you know that's an act of war as as serious as if they dropped a bomb on you. Is there any reason for us to believe that, and we mentioned a lot of different people, the Chinese, the Russians, wherever this is coming from, that their governments are actively doing anything they can and everything they can to infiltrate the terrorists on their own soil, stop this from happening, or is this just sort of on their minds? I, look, I'm sorry, Mr. Obama in America, we're, we're doing the best we can, but we really can't do much about it. Yeah, so I think, you know, attribution, the fact that well, you can't attribute malicious activity on the cybernet, that's kind of a lie. You can, both through the combination of what you can do on cyber forensics and what you can do at other intelligence activity. I think most of this activity you actually can. Most of it we don't bother because it's, it, it's, it's, it's a nuisance, and if we'd be chasing all this stuff down, it would consume all our resources. Sometimes we don't talk about these things because we don't like to admit that we're being attacked or know how much we know about how much we're being attacked. I, I did think, for example, where the U.S. government came out and actually called the Chinese out by name. We, we, we do know these things, and we, we, we can uh, uh, do that. So they, they're, you could maybe say there's some plausible deniability out there, but the reality is, is you know what? We know what you're doing. Uh, and, and we're watching that. But the, the thing is, is right now, I think from state actors, the number one thing we have to fear is, is they're trying to read everything. They want to understand all about our systems because you never can tell what you might want to do with that in the future. And in some cases, they are doing massive economic damage. I mean, I do think we've reached a tipping point where Chinese and uh, Russian espionage, where the, the costs of that outweigh the benefits. In China, for example, they, they have taken whole market shares away from the U.S. by stealing our industrial secrets and essentially building cheaper uh, uh, industrial capacity in their country, stealing our intellectual capital. I mean, this is getting to be a very, very serious business. Ten seconds, Jim. How close are we to having some sort of a backup plan? Uh, I don't know. It, it, look, there are a lot of people out there that know that, that recognize this threat and are trying to do something about it. Um, if, if we've got the balance right, exactly right that I'm, I'm not sure but we are working on it uh, we're yeah. working on it one can only hope we work on it a whole lot faster and get this taken care of so we don't have to shock people anymore with this jim carafano thank you so much for joining us we'll continue to follow the story thanks for having me all right thank you very much uh, the power is still on by the way just in case you're wondering okay after the break we're going to go to the newsmax new york studios and see what's coming up on newsmax tv because remember america's forum nine to noon eastern weird noon to three three to six it's the steve malzberg show on newsmax